If you're like me, you love vintage tools. Uh, tools that our grandparents, our great-great-grandparents could have used. But when we find these tools at some sort of market, often they've been a bit neglected or even abused, and we've got to restore them to bring them back into service. Today I want to share with you the method that I use to remove rust from tools because it is the, it is the cheapest, it is the most effective, it is the simplest, and most importantly, it's the most gentle on your new find. G'day, welcome to the channel, and if you're new, my name's Stuart Chignall. Uh, now I posted a video where I sort of documented some of this stuff a, a little while ago where I was reconditioning a scythe that was my wife's great, great grandfather's, we think. Um, it wasn't her great grandfather's, so it was either her great great or her great 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 grandfather's. Um, but anyway, I just thought I'd go into it again because um, uh, based on some comment, comments in the Japanese Woodworking Techniques Facebook group, um, and I thought it just, it, like, this method is so simple, I don't know why you would use any other method. And that is electrolysis. Uh, now, a lot of links you'll find on on um, on the internet, I found made it harder, basically. But this method is just so, so easy. First thing you need is a tub. Now, the next thing you need is what's known as a sacrificial anode, something that is going to get rusted away till there's basically nothing left. Now I use these formula tins because we get, you know, we go through lots of them. You know, I think we go through about three, five of these or more a week. Um, so we've got a ready supply of them um, and we'd just be throwing them out anyway. Um, but you can use whatever sort of, anything metal, basically. Anything iron is what you want to use. Um, do not use stainless steel. This water looks horrible, but is actually safe. Whereas if you use stainless steel, it's quite, quite toxic. And you want to use something you don't care about and you never want to, you know, basically you throw away because this is what happens to them. They literally just rust out. Like that is being held together by the paper, pretty much. With these tins, um, what I then do is um, put a hole in them, like so. And the reason I put the hole in them is so they don't, you know, they don't float. Uh, and then I've got this gang of um, clips made up, which is just in a, a in a you know sort of set of wire connectors, and they're all linked up to the one wire, which comes back to here. Uh, and I'm just in the process of changing over the tins, so I've connected all those up. Now, if you're being fussy, you might make make it so that um, you don't get the wooden the wooden parts of a tool um, in the mix. I used to do that, but now I just don't bother. I, th I find for the length of time that you have the tool in the mixture, it doesn't really absorb that much moisture, as long as you don't forget about it and leave it in overnight. Um, so yeah, they just put a clip on and then get that to go in. Um, I find it's a good idea to have a range of different ways of attaching the clips. For thick um, uh, carner blades, um, you wouldn't be able to use those little clips. So I've got this clip here, just a bare wire, and then the pressure of the clamp holds the bare wire onto the metal. Now, it's a good idea to um, to get to place the, the connection where there's clean metal. Now, it's not always possible because if a tool's really rusted, it's well, it's really rusted. Often I find I don't need to. I just put the tool in, position the wire where a moderately clean spot, or even if it, there is no moderately clean spot, just anywhere. And then I'll come back half an hour later and take it out, give it a light brush, and then the metal immediately around, the rust immediately around the, um, the connection will, be, will come off, and then I've got a clean piece of metal and I'll just put it back in. In the solution, you want to put um, bicarbonate of soda. Um, that, you can get that from supermarkets, it's really easy. Um, in this tub, which I think is a 40 litre tub, I, I put 250 grams. Um, if you put in too little, the reaction will just go a bit slower. If you put in too much, um, then you've wasted some. So it really doesn't need to be accurate, just whatever. Um, you don't need, unless you replace the water, you don't need to replace the bicarbonate of soda. Just keep reusing the same solution. It gets really icky like this, 
but as long as you're not using stainless steel, it's you know it's not gonna it's not it's not gonna make you sick. Don't drink it or anything, but you know it's safe to put your hands in. All I've shown you so far is bog standard electrolysis. Um, the, the, the thing where my method is easier than others is the power source. Now in other links you'll see to use a car charger or some sort of other battery charger or whatever. Um, problem is with modern chargers, they've got little chips in them to tell when the battery is dead and when the battery's dead they won't put any charge down the wires. And unfortunately an electrolysis tank is considered to be a dead battery. I simply use a wall wart, a little you know, low voltage power source, like whether it's six volt, nine volt, 12 volt, whatever, doesn't matter. Now this one is uh, nine volts, 500 milliamps. Um, so really not much current at all, and it does the job. I cut the plug off, work it with, then with the multimeter, work out the positive wire versus the negative wire. The positive wire goes to the sacrificial anodes, and the negative wire goes to the tools. Now if you don't have a multimeter, that doesn't matter. The easiest way to fix that is you get a rusty nail, um, or two rusty nails. Uh, you connect one to one wire, one to the other wire, and the nail that gets rustier is the positive, and the nail that gets clean is the negative, and that's how you go. Um, you don't need the gang arrangement that I've got up, but that's so I can do a whole, you know, I can do five tools at once. Like if you just want to do one, it's, it's like a, it's an even simpler setup. The only word of caution I would offer though is that even though these things are rated for continuous use, I have had a number of them die. So to get around that, um, what I've been using is a timer. Um, this one I've had set up, huh. I think the kids have been playing with this because it's all over the place. I did have this set up for one hour on, 15 minutes off, and that sort of 15 minutes off gives a chance for it to you know, cool down if there's a problem. I also, particularly now that it's being summer, um, position this so it's not in the sun and so it's not gonna overheat. Uh, and since I started using that, um, I haven't lost another wall wart, um, another power supply, and that's been running for months later, which is a bit of an indictment because I haven't thrown those other ones away. Um, yeah, so I'd better probably do that. So I'm gonna connect the rest of those tins, connect the knives, and then I'll come back and I'll show you how they clean up. Um, so the idea of the clip is that it's very easy for me to change the, change the sacrificial anode. I just unclip the tin and just clip a new one on. Um, yeah, but you've really gotta make sure that all the clips are above the water. Otherwise, yeah, they'll get eaten away as well as the, um, the tins. Okay, and once you get going, let's see if I can get this to focus. Oh, that water looks lovely. But if you can see those bubbles coming up. All right, that's the bubble, that's the process in action. But this is how they've come out. Now this one was covered in red paint, but if you look here, I can just, just wipe it off with my finger, which is fabulous. Um, this, I'll give these a bit of a scrub with some steel wool, and then I'll show you what they look like. So as you can see, these have cleaned up really nicely. Um, now the paint is still on the wooden handle, can't do much about that with electrolysis. But if you just look, you can't see a skerrick of paint on the blade, and even more impressive, Look at this. The maker's mark was full of paint. Now, to get that out with um, more aggressive met methods, like, um, well, you couldn't do it with sandpaper. I guess maybe you could scrape it up with a Dremel or something, but, but with the electrolysis, it's just so easy. Um, and uh, I'm, one of the reasons I've been, I'm, I'm doing this video was in response to a guy who posted that he was using a sand tumbler. Now I think a sand tumbler would probably eventually get into the detail of the maker's mark and get the paint out. And of course it would possibly get the maker's mark or the um, paint off the wooden handle as well. But I think 
it would also cause some significant damage, some wear. Like the, the length of time you'd have to leave it in the sand, the tumbling sand, to get all the paint out of it, all the little nooks and crannies of the maker's mark, I think you'd, I think you'd, you'd trash the rest, of the, um, the rest of the blade and the handle. Um, and another reason I like doing this, especially with tools that I sell, is that uh, before I go to the effort of restoring them, I can see how bad the damage is. And when I sell them, my customers can see how bad the damage is. So they're not, they don't have to guess whether they're buying something that's, you know, a, a reasonable deal or not. So as long as I put them in the electrolysis, remove the rust, and then take good photos, they can buy, you know, with confidence. But if you see this, this is, um, this has got an error. It's got a, the hollowing. And you can see here, here there's quite bad pitting. But that's in the hollow, so that doesn't really matter that much. Uh, there's a little bit of pitting here, and there's almost no pitting along here. It's a little bit at the tip here, but that'll be able to get that out really quickly. And this, um, this little dagger, now it just looked like it had surface rust on, and for the most part it did. Like there's very little damage from the rust there. It's just slight discoloration and marks. That, grey colour rather than Chinese because there's these tiny little micro pits all over it. Um, they will polish out really, really quickly. But you couldn't, but the, where there is a bit more damage, and it's going to be hard to see. Oh, there we go. No, there we go. It shows it. You couldn't see, or at least it wasn't obvious, that damage to the edge. If I can get it to focus. That damage to the edge when the rust was on it. But with the rust removed, it's really, really clear. Now in this case, that will clean up with no big deal. This is a, a double beveled um, knife working on both sides. Those nicks in the blade will disappear very, very quickly. But if we are talking about the, say, the flat of a chisel, like this one, but do you see how rough the back of that chisel is? It's shocking. And what looked relatively smooth with the rust on, with the rust taken off through the electrolysis, electrolysis bath, you can now see that the pitting's pretty, well, pretty awful. So, you know, if I was gonna sell this on eBay, I'd put it on for a dollar and just hope that I got something. Um, in fact, I'd put it on with four or five others like it for a dollar and hope that I got something for it. Because that, um, Look, it's still a good chisel, it'll still clean up nicely, it's just gonna take a long time to get the back of that chisel flat and ready to sharpen. And so it's not so much that the quality of the chisel's ruined, it's that it's gonna take a lot of work to restore it. Well, I hope that proves useful to you. Uh, electrolysis is the simplest. Once you, get your set, once you get your set up, it is so much better than all the other methods I've tried. Acid baths, molasses, um, you know, physical abrasion, and so on. Um, every other method I've tried um, falls down in the thing that is most important to me, and that's how gentle the method is on the tool. That they also fall down on expense and messiness and and difficulty is secondary to me, but they often do that as well. But if you disagree put your opinions down in the, in the comments. I'd, lo I'd love to the chance to discuss it because maybe you know a method that is better, that's better. And if so, I'd love to know it. And if you think this video would be useful for someone else, it'd be great if you could share it. Uh, over the next little while, I'm gonna be producing videos, a series of videos where I'm gonna be taking some really unusual tools and restoring them, uh, taking you through the process of the restoration and then through the project that I'll be using that particular tool for. Some really unusual tools for some really cool projects. Um, but I produce a range of videos on a range of different topics, so not everything I produce might interest you. But anyway, if you don't want to miss anything, make sure you hit the subscribe button and the little bell notification so that you know, at least you've got the chance of um, knowing when I put a video out. Um, but until then, have fun, and I'll see you in the next video.